and um, today's panel here is on the STEM Azing uh, project, which is a fantastic um, initiative. So on the panel today, we've got Steve Gill, who is the founder of World Refrigeration Day and um, a perpetual challenger of the status quo, I've written down here about you. Um, Lucy Sherburn, who's a consulting engineer with Fairheat. Lisa Jane Cook, who's a service sales manager with GEA. And first, we have the inspirational Alex Knight to kick us off with a brief on what STEMazing is about. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Right, apologies, I'm going to keep turning my head because I don't have what's in front of me on the screen. Um, so I'm hoping with this panel session today that we're going to do three things. We want to talk about why visible role models are so important in our sector, which hopefully I'm preaching to the converted there. You already know that. Um, some practical hints and tips from me, but also our panel, on empowering yourself and inspiring others. Um, and I would really love it if you could have a personal pledge that you would take away from today, so something that you feel you are going to do differently or more of after this session. So I'm going to talk a bit about Stamazing and why I set it up and what it's all about. Um, first, a quick intro to me. So I normally talk about these things. I'm a mechanical engineer, fellow of the IMA Key, et cetera, et cetera. But I think one of the most important things to say is that I would describe myself as a recovering wallflower. So when I was younger, and this is still into my 20s, I would be very happy sitting on the sidelines, letting other people take the limelight, not interacting, not being like too overly sociable. I just found that so painful and awkward. Really, really sort of built up a lot of anxiety around that. And it took me a while to actually learn how to sort of manage that and how to embrace it and actually learn to enjoy it, to be in situations where I was in the limelight. I had the spotlight on me. And then that led to so many opportunities for making a difference, but also empowering myself. And things that you'll see up there, like speaking in front of large audiences, winning awards, being on TV, all of that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been proactive about sort of stretching my own comfort zone. So it's one of the things I think is particularly important for women in STEM. I'm glad to see we've got quite a lot of women in the audience. Um, we can help ourselves, but doing it through helping others, so by inspiring the next generation and using that as our vehicle, it actually ends up helping us at the same time. And part of, you know, being part of a bigger mission, which hopefully some of the ladies on the panel will talk about today, um, in a way is kind of empowering in itself. And it means it takes the pressure off you feeling like I'm putting myself out there. You're part of something bigger than you. And I personally have found that very, very beneficial and rewarding. So why is this so important? Why is it really important that we have visible role models? Why is it important that we have more diversity in STEM? We've already, I've been in sessions today where this has been talked about already. So it's brilliant to see this is on the agenda for a lot of people. The stats show it is a no brainer. Diversity breeds innovation ultimately. We know diversity of thought leads to more innovation and importantly, inclusive innovation. So all the reports that are out there now, it's like we're, we're past even talking about it now. Diversity matters. Diversity is really important in business. And the fact that it leads to more innovation is sort of the thing that I feel is should be the biggest driver. Yes, you get better performance, you get better um, bottom line, you know, your, your financials are better. But ultimately, in this industry, we have to be about innovation if we're going to solve the global challenges that many have, have been talked about today already. So, but we do obviously have a challenge. And like I said, it's great to see, like I'd probably say more than 50% of the audience are women here. Um, maybe that's because it's about diversity and that's another thing. I wasn't going to go off on this tangent, but sometimes you find you get people in the minority coming to things about diversity and inclusion. And actually we need everybody to come. So thank you to the men who are also in the room. Um, we do have a real challenge. You know, we've got a problem with the fact that a skills um, shortage in STEM is costing us a lot of money in the UK, full stop. Um, we are not tapping into the talent pipeline that is available to us because people don't understand what STEM careers are about or that they could be accessible to them. Um, so, you know, from a gender diversity perspective, which is where I focus, but also within that, we have a lot of other sort of areas of diversity that we look into. Women in STEM in the UK being only 24%, that's not enough. When you drill down to engineering, 
and a lot of people I've spoken to today are in the engineering field, it's only 16% women. So, you know, we are missing out on a huge talent pool by not tapping into more women in these sectors. So, again, uh, this has already been mentioned, but tackling gender stereotype early, so smashing some of those stereotypes about who can or should do STEM early with really young children is so important. So I'm a real champion and supporter of STEM outreach in schools at all levels. And I know a lot of companies do STEM outreach at a secondary school level because that's sort of more the immediate talent pipeline or sort of college or university level. I'm all for that, that's brilliant. But we have to do more at primary and even infant school to tackle some of these gender stereotypes around STEM. The research shows that this bias starts really young, and I'm sure anyone who's got children or has engaged with children will know that young children already establish what they see as jobs for boys and jobs for girls, or toys for boys, toys for girls, clothes for boys, clothes for girls. It's, it's very gender divided right from such a young age. Um, and this research backs that up with career choices, like having a lot less support for counter stereotypical career choices, like a girl wanting to be an engineer. If we can get more visible role models um, who are women in front of kids, it doesn't just benefit the girls, it benefits the boys and the girls, and research shows this as well, that yes, of course it benefits the girls, you can't be what you can't see, as the saying goes, but boys also see women in STEM as more equal, so see those roles as more equitable, which is really important, even more important, in fact, that we have that sort of tackling that unconscious bias at a very young age, which then just perpetuates and becomes unconscious bias with adults in the workplace, which we know we have issues with um, in STEM industries as well. Um, so yeah, so there's the research showing that, that girls who interact with STEM educators really benefit, um, but boys do too, so it's a win-win. And lastly, just some more research that shows how we can really have a big impact <coughs> if we tackle um, gender stereotypes at a young age with um, STEM role models who are delivering STEM sessions. So all of this kind of research underpinned my focus in STEMazing. When I left my job in industry, I was a technical director at an engineering consultancy firm in London. I left that in 2019, set up STEMazing, which is a not-for-profit social enterprise. And I created this because I'm very, very passionate about this area, supporting women and inspiring children. Um, and the reason why I'm so passionate about it, because as a woman in STEM myself, I've experienced some of the challenges and the barriers. I've also seen the opportunities as well. Um, but, and I realized, like I said right at the start, it helps, um, it helps the women themselves by stepping up as visible role models, as well as inspiring the next generation. So that's why I've put empowered visible role models are just as important right now in the workplace as they are out there inspiring young people, okay? So it's a win-win um, if we can do more of that. But there's lots of things from many years of mentoring and managing other women in STEM that I have come to realize are barriers. And there is a big barrier around stepping up as a visible role model. And one of the biggest things is just that feeling of fear that you don't necessarily want to be seen as a role model or sort of standing out from the crowd or having all eyes on you. It's a bit of a scary prospect. Um, some people love it, but those people are in the minority. Um, there's lots of things, and from talking to people that I've mentored over the years and worked with, these, these sort of things come up a lot. Fear of, for example, making a mistake in front of people, being ridiculed, being shamed, like even speaking up in a meeting and making a mistake, saying something wrong, um, or that people don't agree with. The feeling of not being good enough, not having the right skills or qualifications to be the one speaking up and saying, you know, being more visible and more vocal. So there's lots and lots of fear around this idea of being more visible and vocal as a role model. Um, but what we talk about a lot in the Inspiration Academy is the fact that we have to sort of step into our fear zone. We have to stretch our comfort zone because that's the only way we will grow and develop. It's great if you can do it in a supportive environment where those around you are championing you, so in a supportive work environment. But we have to be the ones to actually physically do that for ourselves. And there are many benefits of doing that. 
The other thing that I see a lot, and I just wanted to mention today, is this sort of um, issue of negative self-talk that women have. We're very good at putting ourselves down um, or not taking credit where we deserve the credit and sort of, you know, being uh, sort of caring and making sure other people around us feel the credit when it's actually we deserve to take that credit. So I think the thing around negative self-talk, which again research has showed is really, really damaging for anyone who does it, it actually reduces your performance. Studies have shown that if you rate yourself more poorly than you actually are, your performance gets worse. So we are really hurting ourselves when we have this negative internal sort of chatter, which we can watch out for, and it's, it's something you can become much more aware of and just stop doing. Um, so all of that is kind of like the backdrop as to why I set up Amazing, because I feel like there is really a place for supporting women in STEM, to be more confident in themselves, um, to be more visible as role models, and link that into inspiring the next generation, which we do with our Just Amazing Women and our Just Amazing Kids initiatives. And then at the beginning of last year, um, I launched the Inspiration Academy, which again is like part of my not-for-profit. It's free for women in STEM to come on. It's free for primary schools to take part in. Um, I get sponsorship from organizations like World Refrigeration Day, who help me run that. Um, but it's open to any women in STEM. You don't have to have STEM qualifications to apply. You just have to be a woman in a STEM industry to apply. You can come on, do our four-month program, which is all about building you up as a visible role model and connecting you in with primary schools to deliver our tried and tested STEM Amazing Kids activities. So I've got a little video here to show you, which hopefully you'll be able to get a bit of an insight into what the Inspiration Academy is. you a bit of a feel for the kind of stuff we do all really interactive hands-on stem activities that just use simple resources that you have around the house as i developed all of those during covid um, they're all run online so the women can be anywhere delivering to a school anywhere because we zoom into the classroom um, as you've seen there we've started to get countries internationally involved now in the current round of the inspiration inspiration academy i've got a hundred women in stem going through the program at once um, we've got at least 15% of those women are outside of the UK, um, and they will be delivering STEM sessions into schools in the UK as well as locally in their own countries. So for example, I've got a woman engineer in Kenya who works in renewable energy delivering STEM sessions into a school in Wales, um, whilst also doing her local uh, school as well. Um, and I'm just blown away by the feedback I get from the women because I knew it would be great for the schools, seeing women in STEM zooming into their schools, doing hands-on activities, I knew they'd love that. But the fact that it's benefited women as well has been a really unexpected added bonus. So I'm, I'm really, really proud of that. And thank you to everybody who's been involved and lots of people in the room have been involved. Um, so if you want to get involved, the next round will open in January for um, registration. So the details are there. You can look on our website to get more details, which is amazinglimited.com. Um, and just a last quick message to say that 
you know, this is what hopefully the panel will talk about, but we are all already <coughs> role models. We can own that title of role model, no matter who you are, man, woman, whatever ethnicity, religion, background, sexuality, we are all role models. People will, in your sort of local vicinity, look to you, no matter how senior you are or not. And when you go into schools, absolutely, those children see you as role models. So we all have a part to play as visible role models. And as you're doing that, you not only inspire others, but you empower yourself with huge benefits for yourself and your own career as well. Okay, that's it, thank you. So we're gonna go into a bit of a panel discussion now, I believe. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Um, as I said, in the intro, quite inspirational. Um, amazing concept and making some great progress. So what is next? Just amazing. So am I, yeah, you can still hear me, perfect. Um, well, I wanna quite, you know, in basic terms, grow it because we do everything online. It's proven fairly easy to scale it. I mean, I, I have like more people helping me behind the scenes now, which is really, really helpful. Um, but definitely scaling it so that we have more women reaching more children. That's like, it's basic maths, that's great. Um, but also taking it more international. I mean, World Refrigeration Day has been incredible in helping me tap into contacts and networks abroad, especially in Africa, countries in Africa. Um, so I'd love to take it more internationally as well. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, I didn't ask you to join the panel just for a bit of gender balance. I thought it was a diversity. Yeah. <laughs> Why, why did you feel this was important for the building services sector? Why did you get involved? Uh, I, th I think the, uh, the dynamics in this room speak a lot, actually. The way it changed between the excellent previous speaker, I have to say, and then diversity, which Alex has pushed upon. The industry has been... It's not new, diversity inclusion. We've, you know, we've been paying lip service to it for decades, to be honest. Several decades. And I just felt that um, lip service is one thing, but action is another and uh, every year I, I think of how we can address this and every year nothing happens. I spoke to Alex who just had the perfect idea and solution to everything and I just couldn't wait to get involved because it is positive action, it addresses everything that we just discussed and I wanted also to be I have to say, a male ally to all this because I think it's important that it's not just the women that are in mm. yeah. yeah, indeed. Um, so in terms of the actual, to Lucy, Lisa, Jane, you've both been through the, the, the academy and you've been delivering projects. So what do you think that the training has actually done for you personally? How has it helped you to develop Lucy first? Yeah, the, the whole Inspiration Academy programme was incredible. Obviously, of course, you have the benefits of, of going into school and being the role model. But personally, um, the programme gives you so much more. So for the first couple of months, what Alex has put together is this program which really you get coached on how to kind of be confident and how to present and it's all of those skills that you never really get taught in or I never got taught it in school or university or even in the workplace you're not really taught tips and tricks on how to present better or how to how to be confident and it's it was the whole the whole program on how to empower yourself and how to be confident and just little t tips like the breathing exercises and putting on a song that's going to like give you high energy before presenting, things like that have been so beneficial, um, which has meant coming and doing something like this and speaking at other panels feel a lot more easier and not as terrifying or daunting as they probably would have a year ago. So it's been incredibly beneficial in terms of my own self-development, my own confidence um, as well. Yeah, really, really good. Lisa Jane, same question. Yeah, and I actually, really similar experience, um, but I've said to Alex, for me, it's been quite transformational for my career because of that empowerment and, you know, the fact that we've been given the skills to be able to stand up and present and to hold our own, like I said earlier, you know, to be able to go into a boardroom and, and actually say what we're thinking and be able to bring about change, you know, not just to, to, to be there to represent women, but actually to help guide and bring us to where we need to be. Um, and the other thing that I think that was really important that come out of it is the networking as well. So mm -hmm. I've connected with so many incredible um, women in all different fields of engineering that it's allowed us to bring their insights and wisdom into what we're trying to do. Um, you know, it's no secret in, in our industry and in our field, we're a much lower representation than in other areas. So you say 16% in engineering on a whole. Yeah. 
that's a very different picture in, in our industry. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good for us to connect and learn from other women mm -hmm. in other areas of engineering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got some real environmental and social challenges in society just now. Do you think they're more likely to inspire young people to seek a career in engineering? I don't know who wants to take that. Well, I, yeah. I can say yes, uh, straight away. The, the interest in the environment and climate change is definitely, well, not just research, the mm -hmm. yeah. thing everywhere. So taking that to yes across the panel, I'm pretty sure you're not going to disagree with that. <laughs> uh, just to uh, add to that, because yeah. we... We've started now, I keep changing the last activity that we do with the kids because every time it's not been quite right and I've tweaked it again. And this time, which I've tested in schools, I've, we link it to the UN SDGs and we talk about what the UN SDGs are, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and we say to the children, like, pick one that you care most about and think how what we've been learning in the last five weeks could help you come up with a solution to that problem. And so the kids, they, they really care about the environment they care about plastics in the ocean, they care about climate change, they care about forest fires and flooding. And we're talking to seven-year-olds, and they really care about that, and they're coming up with fantastic ideas. So I completely agree. Mm. They, I think it will, like in a way, the, the crisis in so many areas will hopefully, if people can connect the fact that engineering and STEM skills are critical to solving those, that's the key connection, then hopefully that will inspire more, more mm. to go into STEM. Yeah, because I've, I've always focused on that. Uh, the building services sector is responsible for something like circa 40% of the total energy consumption in the UK. So obviously we need the best minds yeah. to come into the sector to actually address that. Um, you mentioned 16%, um, it's only 16% of people in engineering are, are women, and I think, Lisa Jen, I think RECHP is about 9%, but yeah, it's an even bigger, um, a more acute problem, I guess. So. And that's just looking at the gender diversity, yeah. obviously. But we're actually very much not just a male industry, but we're a white male industry, largely. And we really do need to address that. Because there's a huge chunk of the population we're just not actually attracting in from the outset. So how do you think we can better communicate the opportunities that are open to the kind of diverse, the more diverse workforce of the future? I mean, is that what you're addressing through, obviously, with, with, with the kids at school, I guess? I, I think that is, that is the thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because when you go to the schools and you talk to the children and you do these STEM sessions and they might actually ask you, what, what is it that you do? And then you start talking about the industry that we work in and why it's important. And maybe not even, you know, the, the subjects of today, but I've talked about data centres and how important cooling mm -hmm. is to that. And when you tell them that if they didn't have cooling, we wouldn't have data centres, they wouldn't have a phone... <laughs> Xbox, the internet, <laughs> then their minds are blown because they're like, hang on a minute, this is really important. Yeah. So it's finding those levels that you can connect, things that they yeah. can understand and connect with, and then yes. they start to get interested, don't they? Because a life about the internet <laughs> is they're thinking about. Yeah. yeah, making it tangible to everyday life, definitely. Can't be what you can't be, you don't see, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look, the poll results are up there, and it's 50 50. Oh. I guess that's in the room. Okay, so we did a poll. Great. Well, I'd love to see them put their hands up, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's diversity. Um, we're nearly out of time. Key message you want to take away from this? I do two key messages, sorry. Okay. But it's, it's connected to the two things, so I think never feel like you haven't got something to offer yourself as a visible role model. Right now, you could go and inspire people, at, young people at any age, but particularly if you can connect with young people. They really want to hear from people who are not their teachers, not their parents. They're really interested um, and you will inspire them with your story. So step outside your comfort zone and go and do it. Lisa Jen. Um, I think probably for me, it's probably more about the personal development side, so like the, the comfort zone. But if you have an opportunity to do something like um, it's amazing, or even just to get into schools and talk about your careers, it's a really good opportunity to sort of push yourself and develop those presentation skills and you know there's nothing more scary than 315 year olds <laughs> so it's it's that really to take those opportunities for the personal development i think i guess for people sat in this room you might be a male or i it, it was steve who introduced the program to me i wasn't aware of it so i think if you're sat here and you know somebody who might be a really good visible role model who works in your company somebody you know in stem 
give them a bit of encouragement to go and sign up because I think there's even a bit of encouragement needed or a bit of a push needed to sign up to something like this and Steve at when we met earlier on in the year. So it's been incredible in terms of personal development um, and the, all the benefits that have come from it. So yeah, I think my key message is if you've got people who you think might be good, sign up because it really is beneficial. I'm just, uh, just to answer your earlier thing about diversity, I mean, uh, a woman in Kenya speaking to somebody, well, how diverse do you want? And did you see the, the deaf uh, presenter? And it's, it's much broader than just gender, this is. It's mm -hmm. through diversity. So congratulations, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks, That's a good message to finish on. Thanks very much, um, Alex, and all of you for, um, for joining us today. It's a fantastic project. We're really, really proud of yourself. Thank you.